Hey YouTubers, welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, that'd be fantastic for more cool videos like this. Uh, for those that are already subscribed, you know the drill, and here we go. Say we've got a rifle that's actually quite uncommon, and uh, I won it at an auction a while back, and I'm just now making a video about it. We've got the uh, Bertier uh, model 07-15-34, commonly known as the Bertier M34 in the collecting community. So this rifle started its life as a Bertier model 0715 rifle, and in the 1930s, specifically in 1934, the French were kind of experimenting and playing around with a new caliber, the 7.5 by 54 versus the 8mm Lebel, and they were figuring out if it would be more cost effective to convert rifles or just redesign one. Uh, you got to remember this is a few years before the Moss 36 was adopted, so they didn't have that rifle in in large numbers like they did these. So they took stocks of Lebel 1886-93 rifles and Bertier 0715 rifles and found out that the uh, Bertier rifle was actually an easier conversion for them. So this rifle is chambered in the 7.5mm and to do so, to go from a big rimmed cartridge like the 8mm Lebel cartridge to a rimless cartridge that's a lot smaller in diameter requires you to do some uh, modifications and we'll get going on that in a second. I just kind of wanted to give you a close-up of this gun kind of just sitting here um, this was in a museum in France and I got it with a weld that was welding the bolt shut tried to get that off as clean as I could um, tried my best it's not the best little modification in the world but um, it actually works and the bolt does cycle I'll get to that in a second once I put the camera up on a static position um, you can see that there is a giant hole right there and my dumb ass, being very inexperienced and kind of excited for getting a rare gun for my collection, totally overlooked this. It's actually totally demilled. This goes through into the chamber, and you can't even chamber around. So this is a glorified wall hanger and a p example of one of these super rare firearms. Um, only about 50,000 of these were ever made, and of that, surviving examples are few and far between. Um, unfortunately this is demilled, but we can still work around that and I can still show you the rifle for what it is. So I'll kind of show you the differences between a standard 0715 and then we'll you know, kind of go on a little bit more of the history and hopefully you guys can learn something. Okay, so to start, obviously you can see that the stock has been messed with a little bit, and there's a floor plate instead of the hole for the Manlicker style uh, end block system where the little end block drops out of the bottom when you chamber your last round. So that's the first way to kind of tell that this isn't a standard Bertier rifle. Uh, the bolt is the same, but if you look on the inside, you can see that the bolt face is actually I'll try to angle this so you guys can see this. Um, the bolt face is actually a little smaller and um, the extractor is a little bit different than the standard um, 8mm Lebel bolt face. So, also looking in here you see that there is a charger clip guide right there as well as a magazine system, a Mauser style magazine system and the cutoff on the left side of the receiver so you can actually push the rounds down like a Mauser style rifle. Um, that's pretty cool, it's a pretty telltale way. You still got the little screw right there. So it's literally a Bertier that just got updated which is pretty fascinating. Um, the rear sight was changed um, from the large rear sight, small front sight to a 900 meter graduated sight. So this doesn't go past 900 meters. Um, the old Bertier goes, I forgot exactly what it goes up to but goes well past 900 meters. Um, the handguard looks about the same. Um, I really can't tell the difference on, from this, from a uh, you know, 715 or a carbine or anything. So I got the uh, rear band is the same with the circular saddle ring type sling swivel like was really common on most French rifles, even the Moss 36. And then you get to the end and it's A, significantly shorter and B, it's got a weird front sight on it. It's not that really thick blocky front sight like is on most Bertier rifles. It's a Mauser style sight so you actually line up the target on top of this front sight and it's a lot thinner and all that stuff and etc etc. 
It is set up to take the uh, the Labelle the Rosalie bayonet or the Epi bayonet, um, which is pretty interesting that they didn't design a whole new bayonet. But I, you know, I guess if you've still got all the stocks from the First World War and prior, and in between, why would you design a whole new bayonet and take up all the resources and time and money? Um, this is an import mark. Oh, yeah, actually, actually, it is. I just can't read it. Like, it's not really legible right there, the import mark. But, uh, where is that import? I don't know. It looks like one. It looks like the place it would be, but I, it's so illegible. Um, yeah, so you've got this rifle that the barrel is a lot different. It's a lot thicker, actually, than a bare TA barrel. And it's shorter, so they just took the stock and they chopped it off right about here. It still retains the original, uh, front band with the stacking swivel and the bayonet kind of seat. Um, but the rifle itself is a lot shorter. And back here you've got, I mean this is a non-matching example, so you have the original stock number on there, 7320, so the bolt actually does match the stock, but they, and they just stamped that on the receiver. We'll try and get to the markings here in a second. If you can see this, um, you've got MLE 1907, 15, M34, Moss. So that's how you can also tell, you know, if you're close up and you can see one of these. And then Cal, 7.5 with the giant frickin' demilitarization hole. So I, I didn't, I totally overlooked that. I literally, in my happy giddy state, thought this was like a, a pressure relief cut. <laughs> like, you know, you find on the O3A1 and various other weapons like the Titan Man and Arisaka. And... I was talking to um, Ian from Forgotten Weapons. I said, hey, uh, does yours have this on it? He's like, nope, that rifle is screwed. It's demilled. I was like, ah, great. But it's still a really cool collector piece um, just to have an example. You know, I mean, this thing is functional, so you know, I'll check it. Obviously, it doesn't chamber around. It can't chamber around, but I'll still check it. It does cycle. It, trigger pull is actually quite nice. And um, I would have loved to shoot this thing, but I'm not going to do that because I'd have a catastrophic failure right there uh, but yeah it does cycle very nice and I just god I would have loved to shoot this thing but yeah if you guys didn't know about these um, they're pretty cool they're not as rare as the model or the M27 the the LaBelle conversion because they didn't make as many of those and they're a little bit older but so this is what a lot of French soldiers would have been using prior to the introduction of the Moss 36 um, and even after the introduction, because Moss 36 supplies didn't catch up to the entire French military until actually post-World War II. So, yeah, this fired the same caliber, so, I mean, you could interchange it, and I'm pretty sure you could use the same clips that they designed for the Moss 36. I haven't tried it yet, but it looks like you can. It's wide enough and everything, and, um, I've looked at videos of people shooting this. There's actually quite a few, uh, malfunctions that they had with the magazine, so that might have been an issue, um... You know, they only made, you know, 50,000 of these, which sounds like a lot, but you got to factor in this. These were all sitting there during the Second World War. A lot of them were used, a lot of them got captured, a lot of them got destroyed, and then afterwards they probably got destroyed as well. So surviving examples are pretty few and far between, but I know I already said that. I just kind of wanted to reiterate that because I had never seen one of these before. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it, it sucks that it's demilled, but uh, it's still a really cool example. And if you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, Ian from Forgotten Weapons knows a hell of a lot more about these than I do. So if I can't answer it, I'll 